Welcome to Media Minute. For this episode, we're fixing movies. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And as I mentioned, for this episode, we're uh, taking a look at uh, some movies that had some problems, maybe applying some Band-Aids, maybe trying to work out <laughs> how the story might work if we go back and uh, look at them. Um, who wants to start this week? Pause. Pa. You start, Mike. Waiting. Yeah, sure. I'll, <laughs> I can start, I suppose. I don't have many, so <laughs> yeah. I only got two. But okay. I got but I got other stuff to talk about. Yeah, so that's fine. That's fine. We're so, looking forward uh, to it. Uh, for mine, uh, I'd like to go back and fix the uh, 1997 Joel Schumacher Batman and Robin, considered like one of the worst films, if not, or Batman films at least. <laughs> I don't even think it needs to be considered. Yeah, it's just bad. Yeah, it's, it's got the bad yeah. credit card. It's, it's that one. That's the one with the nipples, right? Uh, no, that was Batman Forever, the one before, I think. Oh, man. Yeah, George, yeah. That was George Clooney. Yeah. or No, uh, Kilmer, I think, was in that one. I don't know. Like, the, the bad Batman movies kind of, like, amalgamate in my mind. This this is the one that has Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Schumacher one. Yeah. yeah um, that was not good. It does have, like, like one of my favorite, favorite like, lines, though. She's trying to kill you, dick. <laughs> <laughs> Batman, of course, talking to Dick Grayson, but uh, yeah, that's about the highlight of that uh, that movie. Um, of course, you got uh, Schwarzenegger doing all sorts of ice puns. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you had to appreciate it though; like he committed. <laughs> he did. He did. Um, in terms of fixing this movie, uh, I would cut Poison Ivy because she's in it really? too. Yeah, like focus on Mister Freeze. Um, I like Poison Ivy better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, I would recast Freeze. Like, I wouldn't have Schwarzenegger. You need someone with. Ooh. Like, yeah. yeah. I'd, ooh, ooh. I'd go uh, Statham. Yeah, yeah, that would work for modern. Statham. Yeah, Jason Statham. For, as Mister Freeze. Yeah, yeah, totally. Or, that would. Work. Aren't we like? I thought you were like sticking to like that 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 year or like that like that decade. Because I feel like Statham Wait, would be oh, like no, really. No, yeah, there's there's, there. there's a, no, but uh, yeah. At least get someone with like a an awesome voice and some gravitas. Like Schwarzenegger was not Mr. Freeze material. Yeah, no. probably not. Yeah. Um, you well, gotta you gotta wonder though, like who else like auditioned or like turned down the role like to get to the point where like I'm thinking like a Charles Dance or uh, you know someone like that, someone with like or yeah. um, I don't know even Patrick Stewart. You know, this uh, like Ooh. Mr. Freeze is a scientist, right? He's not yeah. like super buff or the, anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I doubt there was much of an audition. I feel like this is one of those times. Yeah, that was like, like peak Schwarzenegger, or, or like the tail end of yeah, peak Schwarzenegger. So kind of handed. I don't even role. know if he was governor then. I think that was pre governor Schwarzenegger. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, um, but yeah, I here's here's how like in terms of the story, uh, the easiest way to fix it. Uh, you know, Mr. Freeze is based on the kind of Batman cartoon, Mr. Freeze, which is considered like the pinnacle. So just basically take the episode from the Batman animated series, Heart of Ice, where they introduce like the whole, his wife is sick and he's in, he's, he's basically trying to heal her. Just basically focus on that story. And there you go. That That's how you fix yeah. that movie. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Yeah, it's, He's got a sad backstory. He does. He does. You, you, and yeah. Like, he was a goofy villain uh, prior to the animated series. He was just, like, a guy with an ice gun. And then, like, it, in that Batman animated series, that's where they brought in the whole... Ice to see you. Ice to see you. What finished the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! <laughs> yeah. I mean, those Batman... Those 90s Batman movies were kind of goofy, so... Just kind of, like, de-goofify it. And, you know, All right. give it a bit of gravitas. And I think, I think that would have worked. So would you do it more like a, like a Zack Snyder kind of vibe or? Um, yeah, maybe, uh, um, or Nolan. Um, yeah. Okay. Know, 
imagine like Nolan, like you know the Nolan Batman movies are <laughs> basically considered the best ones. So if you had yeah, Nolan directing would, Mr. Freeze, I don't know. It'd be interesting. Yeah, I'm down for it. Anyway, that's my first uh, fixer upper. Who wants to go next? I'll go. I guess. Yep. Uh, Home Alone three. Yep. I'm not gonna touch the first two. I, I, I was I was, I was actually considering Home Alone three myself. So <laughs> really, I, I'm glad that you took it. But uh, instead of the kid that they cast, yeah, uh, just replace him with the Kazoo Kid on loop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Problem solved. Yeah. There you go. That, like that's it. That's the only. That's the only thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, or, or, that or just have Macaulay Culkin fixes everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they should have just kept Macaulay Culkin. He just keeps getting older and ends up in like home invasion situations like every week. Oh my god! It's, yeah, it's like uh, awesome. it's like one of those murder mysteries, like a murder she wrote, where like the old lady shows up and then everybody dies. Yeah, Home Alone as like yeah H- Home Alone. 36? Yeah, Home Alone 36. He's like, he's, like, he's like 48. <laughs> he's like, oh, man, someone's at the door again. He's just lonely. He's just lonely. <laughs> they, they break into my home, but they ne- they always break my heart. Oh. Why does everyone abandon me? <laughs> Why do they keep going to the airport without me? <laughs> that's, that's actually so depressing, though. Yeah. In a world. Where your like, parents are where your parents are buried every Christmas. Yeah, every Christmas you're abandoned, left behind. You think, Home, you think they would remember at least one year? Home alone, twenty four. Yeah. Still alone. Home aloneer. Home aloneer. Yeah. <laughs> two, two, yeah two home, two alone. Tokyo Drift. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you got the house to yourself. Yeah. Well, at least Why not? Maybe like he, said, what, he a sets week? up like a race car. They're a rich family anyway. I mean, they, oh yeah, they're like eight kids and like a huge house and everything. They ate, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they ate not, kids. no, they didn't eat kids. <laughs> they had it. Now that kids. would be a home alone where the family's cannibals. <laughs> that's uh, a turn trying... I did not expect. Yeah. Why not? So home alone wow. is a kazoo kid <laughs> that involves cannibalism. Sure. Yeah, we're. That works. Yeah, but <laughs> thinking this out in real time. <laughs> I've watched that. I would too. Yeah, for sure. And hopefully <laughs> you will too, because maybe we'll we'll get that made. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> That's the, oh my god. Yeah, y'all are nuts. Rachel, why why don't you pull us up? Oh well, with the vibe I'm going with today, there's no <laughs> we're not going up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. As you could, I don't know if you guys could see this, but I got a new shirt. It says the Losers Club. Okay. So I'm going to be talking a lot about Stephen King again because I feel very strongly about his film adaptions. What do you mean? Langoliers um, is a classic. Say oh, again? Oh, I hated that. Langoliers. Yeah. The airplane the one? The airplane one, yeah. A... I forgot about that oh, one. <laughs> what's that guy from uh, Perfect Strangers? Crap. Uh, yeah, I can't. I, I don't oh. remember too much about it except for it being... It was in true romance. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Rachel. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, like, for, I guess for, like, my first, like, film adaption fix, it would be Cujo. Yep. Because, um, obviously, Stephen King has, like, a very twisted way of looking at the world. <laughs> so, when it came to, like, this movie and stuff, I was excited. And then it came to the ending, and it was like, What? Because, like, I guess, like, the production studio, they saw the, they read the original ending, and they're like, that's too depressing. It's like, what, like, what do you expect? Like, that's Stephen King, right? So it's like a lot of people were upset with the ending. So if anything, I'd probably change the ending. But I also heard that, like, uh, the actress that played the, the main character, like, they actually tortured her on set to get those, like... Reaction shots. Yeah. Right? So... I'm also like maybe like add like <laughs> some less torture. I feel like that'd be a good thing. <laughs> but <laughs> just yeah, ease, I don't know. Ease up like, a I, little bit, not let back slightly. Yeah. I like Cujo. Just, just like yeah. a. I didn't like the ending. The ending was disappointing, because like I, the thing that Stephen King is like has always like talked about in his books and in life really is that there's not very often you get that happy ending, right? So it's like he wanted to like kind of pull that away and be like, life isn't fair. 
And it's like with the end of Cujo, I feel like they just kind of pandered to the audience because they don't want it to be too depressing. Although it kind of takes away a huge plot like part in the st- uh, in the movie, right? So I I would just change the ending. I feel like the original ending in the book was way better. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Solid. I never read it. Yeah. I, I, it's it's a lot darker. Yeah. <laughs> the ending of it is a way darker than what they portrayed in the movie. Well, well, for people who haven't read or, or saw it, what what's the difference between the two? Um, oh, do I want to spoil it? I, I feel it, like it, I'd it's, have it's to. It's an old film. Yeah, so. you're, you're safe. Yeah, I guess. So basically, like in the in the film, if you've if people aren't familiar with the ending, uh, they get out. Cujo gets you know, I think he gets like shot or something. It's been a minute since I've seen it, but it's like uh, they escape and it's just like they get the rabies shot just to be safe and like all that kind of stuff. And then they just kind of go off and live their life. In the book, the little boy actually died because of like the actual like the um, the realness of it kind of thing. Right. Like if you're trapped in a car for like over a weekend, like you're not it's yeah. very rare that you're going to get out of that situation like alive (laughs) okay and like the like the mother ended up losing her mind and had to be put in a psych ward sounds very classic king yeah very two totally different endings yeah um like i like i said before the part of the reason the studio wanted the ending to be more happy was because they were worried that if they kept the original ending like the audience would be disappointed but i feel like it lost like that i don't know the impact it had you know you know what i mean and if you're a fan of the book and you go into the movie and the ending's different, I mean, I feel like you'd be disappointed. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's yeah. like any of S- Stephen King's adaptions, I feel like very few of them lived up to his writing. But at the same time, like when it comes to his books and uh, reading them, com- trying to put all of that into like an hour and a half yeah. is almost impossible. He did The Mist, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, and he said that that actually the movie ending for The Mist was better than what he wrote. Yep, there's been a few times where he liked the movie or like the uh, the oh my god the film adaption better. Yeah, but uh, from what I've seen and like from what I've read from Stephen King and like comparing it to the film adaptions, there's a lot that just don't hit the mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, Stephen King's opinion on his own movies isn't exactly a uh... yeah. Good. <laughs> well, actually, I have one, he didn't one like of the, the other. Shining. Films. Really? Sorry. He hated The Shining. That one, yeah. I'm like, like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. Like he, that was an incredible movie. He was all like, got bent out, all bent out of shape because he wasn't in it. Oh yeah, so that's he, right. Because he usually uh, there's usually cameos, right? Uh, yeah. Kind of like a, like a Hitchcock kind of thing. Yeah. Well, where would I'm he cameo sure he, though? I mean, there's he, only like the family. Yeah. Like, what do you want? Yeah, Just some random. Like a ghost it, in the hedge mage or something. Maybe. I don't, yeah. I don't like, what, do you, what did you want? <laughs> That's the thing, though. It's like he wasn't in every one of his films like that. He didn't always do a cameo. Because I'm pretty sure in Cujo he didn't do that, and in uh, Pet Cemetery he didn't do that in either War or It. Yeah. Or no, that's a lie. It in the new one he did, but in the television version, like in. That was 1980. It's like he he didn't make a cameo in that either. That's only recent Stephen King. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess it's back around to me. Uh, yes. For me, <laughs> it's it's fixing a movie by a single director because he's released so many bad films. Uwe Boll. Uwe Boll. All yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. We, we can do Uwe Boll. <laughs> yeah. Make, maker of such classics as House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Dungeon Siege, Postal. Postal. All, all video game adaptions. And... Uh, you know, basically the theory is that he's making these uh, fantastic movies as a tax break. Remember when he fought that dude? Yeah, he, he actually went into a boxing match with yeah. like, one of his critics. He's Are you he, serious? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he put out a – he was just like – Yeah, he's like, hey, everybody's criticizing me, so I'm going to fight somebody. And someone accepted the challenge. Yeah, and, and, and the person who challenged the boss, like, bowl won. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he kicked the crap, crap out of him. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, literally yeah. there was an online petition to ask him to stop making movies. <laughs> I believe that. Yeah. Yo. But, yeah, so take any movie they're, by him and give it to a different director. Yeah, they're mostly bad. <laughs> yeah. <but they're, laughs> uh, I swear I've seen one or two that weren't actually terrible. Sure. Are you sure? Yeah. 
I mean, I most, can't remember what they're called. Yeah. So maybe he's still making that like, good. As far as I know, he's still making movies. Is he? Not so much video game adaptions. I think he's got his own stuff going on. Huh. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, the, the, my second answer is like a quick one. Like, <laughs> just, 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 just don't let him take any more video it, game just adaptions. Eight, just eighty six a uh, yeah, bowl. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he's not allowed anymore. On no, a I side note, I though, I gotta him. say that's. The fact that he like fought like one of his critics like in a boxing match like I gotta give him <laughs> it's, respect it's, for it's that. It's pretty wild. Like, <laughs> it's pretty wild. That was, that was fun. That was a fun watch. Yeah, that was better than most of his movies. Yeah, probably. There you go. But no, I'm I'm, I'm glad he exists. Yeah, yeah. He's, I, he's I mean, a contrarian. I mean, he don't give a damn. No, no. So it sounds like I I have actually never heard of the director before, but like from what you guys are telling me, it just sounds like he just does what he wants to do. Or he's much, kind of like yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. This is this is what I like. So here you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. That that's my second answer. Nice. <laughs> uh, Chris, I think is back to you. Sure. Uh. My second one is it's it's not really funny or anything, but I would I wouldn't mind seeing a a version of Fight Club. Yep. Where Tyler Durden is actually real, yeah, and not just like a yeah, psychological yeah. projection. Yeah, I feel I don't know. I don't know if I agree with you on that. I feel like if you took away the psychological aspect of it, it would be it would totally. Oh yeah, it would totally uh, change. Yeah, the it would be a point di- of the different movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, I think I would I would like to see that version. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever read the like the novel? That's oh, the Chuck. P- I yeah. can never say his last name. Chuck Palab. Yeah, I'm Chuck not Chuck sure. Chuck. I, I've never read the novels. So. No, I haven't. I've read some of his books, and they're amazing. Yeah. But I, no, I never get around to Fight Club. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that soon. Maybe yeah, we, that should be a topic. Like, yeah, book book adaptions that we do. We should do, like, a book adaptions episode one of these days. But Like yeah. like yeah. like films we've watched but haven't read the books, too? Yeah. Or something like that. Hmm. Maybe now's the, I got a few. the time to yeah. brainstorm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <laughs> live yeah. action brainstorming. But uh, yeah, no, uh, Fight Club where Tyler Durden is real. I, obviously, it would change the movie completely for sure, yeah. and like the message I'm and the the point of it because it's obviously making a, a social comment. Yeah, social commentary on consumerism and all that yeah. stuff. So yeah, it would totally change it, it but it would. I thought I'd, I'd, I'd still watch it. So. Yeah. Yeah, like it would be an interesting concept to see. Final showdown between Ed Norton and uh, Brad Pitt. Yeah. Actually, That'd be cool. speaking of, of that, though, like Brad Pitt, like actually the amount of weight he lost for that and like the amount of muscle compared to fat, like he was in agony for that role to look like that. Like, I think his body fat was like 3% or something just like oh, yeah. stupid. His BMI was probably like 0.1. Oh, yeah. I'd get, it was I'd even bad. Give him that. But cool. David Fincher? Yeah. Yep. Actually, do we have a David Fincher tie-in? Uh, I think we do. Yeah. All right. We'll get yep. to that later. Yep. Segway. 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 I think we should rename the show Segway. Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, we might as well. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to keep on the Stephen King um, film or novel to film. And the next one is Pet Cemetery because both of them horrendously disappointed me. Yep. Yep. Uh, again, I would stick more to the novel because like, I feel like the novel was way more terrifying than either of them could have been like the first pet cemetery that they made like stuck to the novel way better but i was excited for the remakes i thought maybe they would incorporate more of it and they actually took quite a bit away from it and i was like super disappointed oh, yeah like they changed, like a lot of character arcs and i was like what what are you doing <laughs> that cemetery yeah you don't want to go up there <laughs> yeah i haven't seen the uh the more modern one i've, I've only seen uh, the you're not missing yeah them. Nice. Yeah, like, honestly, like, the most disappointing part for me was that, like, all of the, like, all of the ingredients were there. Like, they had some great actors. Like, I was super stoked about the acting. Uh, they had great content to pull from. Like, that one was, was one of Stephen King's best. And it's just, like, I don't know. I just felt like it could have been way better. It was, like, Yeah, it, it just wow. didn't come together. Okay. okay. It just flopped for me. But, so what's yeah, the, how, again, how do you fix it? Stick to the book. Stick to your source content. Like, especially for this recent one, because it's like they changed so much in it that was like, what are you doing? 
Like, why, like, why did you have to change that character? Yep. Like, I guess I'm just going to be full of spoilers this round because in this, in the new one, instead of like the little boy getting run over and then getting buried in the pet cemetery, they did the little girl. And like, the reason they did the little boy, like originally was because it was more t- terrifying to think of like a toddler coming at you, trying to kill you versus like your eight year old daughter yep. kind of thing. Like it was, there was something about that that was like way more nerve wracking. Right. Creepy so I don't know, like that. That part, I was like, what? Really? Come on. Okay. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yep. S- stick to the stick to the source material. That's that's just yeah. my argument for, like, all of the Stephen yeah. King adaptions. <laughs> yeah, there, there obviously has to be some changes, I guess. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you mentioned Fincher. Yes. He directed uh, Alien 3. Uh, that was his head. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, Cameron went off the uh, project, uh, he actually disowned the film a, a little bit later. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, in terms of the Alien franchise, uh, the, it's not considered the the best. Uh, Cameron, of course, who uh, made the first couple of films, is uh, disappointed with the story direction as well because they basically killed off most of the survivors at the end of Aliens, which was uh, Bishop Newt and uh, Hicks. And uh, Cameron actually thought, said, like, that was a slap to the face that he had these characters survive at the end of Aliens, and then they just, like, die off screen at the start of uh, Alien 3. Uh, yeah, that is a bit of a backhand, hey? Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like uh, what, what did they survive for just to die? Yeah. So. Like, trying to build yeah. the universe before, yeah. the, well, before it was a thing. Yeah, apparently the pre-production for this was kind of a bit messy. They had like 10 different script writers try their hand in it, including uh, William Gibson, the guy who did uh, the Neuromancer novels. Oh. And uh, they Crazy. actually, yeah, they actually adapted his script for a couple different things, a comic book and an audio book. So if you want to see an alternate take uh, of Alien 3, there's, uh, there's that that you can read or listen to. Uh, another great follow-up, uh, if you just, you know, if you want to ignore Alien 3, play Alien Isolation. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a game that got released, I think, four years ago, but captures the feeling of Alien. He plays mm-hmm. Ripley's daughter on, like, a oh. space station. And, of course, there's, cool. there's aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. There's xenomorphs. Yeah. So, uh, in, in terms of fixing it, though, okay, so I, I kind of wrote a treatment Oh, yeah? For this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so love one, that. it wouldn't be called Alien 3. It would be called Alien Queen. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, you had Newt surviving on, like, the world in Aliens all by herself. So my thought is that uh, the reason why she survived is the aliens left her alone because she got uh, kind of impregnated by, like, a queen uh, embryo. And it's slower growing, so like so she becomes like part of the dynasty, yeah, type thing. So anyway, they get frozen at the end of Aliens, and so they get rescued, yeah. and of course they scan the cryopods that they're in, and uh, you know they find this alien queen embryo uh, in Newt, so they dethaw her and grab the embryo, then, and then they keep like the other characters on ice for like twenty years, so then after. You know, corporate shenanigans of growing aliens for like. Uh, oh, Umbrella. Yeah. I know it's a different <laughs> franchise, but pretty, it still applies. Much. But yeah, after like corporate shenanigans, an adult Newt comes back and unfreezes uh, Ripley, uh, Hicks, and uh, Bishop. And then they basically have to, you know, fight get, the new alien queen. Get, that, ba- get back to business. Yeah. So. I you know it's basically bad fan fiction at this point, but <laughs> yeah, well, I, I I don't know how else like you would approach that. So yeah, but like even just your treatment of it was better than the entirety of Aliens Three. Yeah, like I would much rather have had that. Wait, Ripley on a prison planet didn't do it for you? <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't like mind new it. Yeah. one of my favorite characters. I was so upset when it was like they came back. It's like oh she's dead. It's like what? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no. I'm just remembering I, I, who directed that. Oh, I can't remember his name. It's a French dude. Uh, he did Delicatessen. Um, ah, crap. Oh, sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking out loud at this point. Yeah. I'll throw up a graphic of who I'm talking <laughs> about. Like I do. There we go. Yep. But, but and anyway, uh, in terms of Alien 3, you got some options like with the William Gibson 
uh, stuff. Or you can play the game, or someone could give me money to make Alien Queen. <laughs> James Cameron, looking at you. Yeah. With puppets. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Actually, th this is going to be a segue for a little bit later. Oh, God. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, Chris, you got any other films you would fix? Nope. Nope. Okay. Rachel? All right. Last one. Another Stephen King adaption because I'm on that kind of train, and that's uh, The Dark Tower. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> is it just another, um, like, follow this source material? They tried to put, a, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's an eight-book series into one movie. Yep. They, they hobbified it. Sometimes you gotta. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta. No, they did not need to do that. Like they cut out major characters. Um, they didn't even follow the storyline very well. Like it was just, it was just one of those things where it was like, we haven't released a Stephen King movie for a while. Let's do all of this in one. Yep. Like I feel feel like if they did it as a TV show, it would have done way better. And like I, I know a lot of people were actually complaining because uh, when they found out that Idris Elba got the main role as the gunslinger, people were pissed. Yeah. Because, like, it didn't fit what they wanted. Because it's, like, in the book, it's, like, he's he's not, I like, an Idris Elba character. A lot of people were hoping for Clint Eastwood's son. I can't remember his name. Because sure. he I'm fit, like, sure. that vibe more yeah. so kind of thing. But, um, yeah, like, I feel like it would have been a way better idea for it to be a TV show. Because they would have been able to cover it way more. And I feel like a lot of Stephen King fans would have been, like, all for that. Yep. So, and honestly, Matthew McConaughey played like a wicked man in black too. So I feel like he would have been really good, like in the series versus like the little screen time that he got. Uh, yeah. I've actually tried watching it like a couple times, but I could just not get into it at all. It's very rare that like I'll actually stop watching a movie once I get started, but. Oh yeah. Like my, both my parents are hardcore Stephen King fans and I went and saw it with them and the entire time, I just looked over, and you could just see just pure disappointment. disappointment it was just yeah. like, it was like, why would you even try to fit that many, that much into one movie, and then expect it to be like a blockbuster? Like it was the thing that frustrated people the most too is that Stephen King was like, oh, it's got my seal of approval, it's awesome, and then when he saw how many people were pissed off, yeah. that's when he was like, you know what, you're right. It's like no, like you. You were you told everybody it was going to be good, and then you gave us that like one of the most like beloved series in his like writing career. Yeah, that like millions of people have read. You're the, like he was the one that was like, yeah, it's good, and that everybody watched it. It was like, no, actually, this is this is terrible. Like it was the worst of the worst. Well, did you see his Shining remake? It was made for TV. But no. <laughs> oh yeah. Terrible. No, no one. I have. No one watched it. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I'm not saying that, like, he's always right in that sense, but I'm saying for, like, something that was, for a series that was that renowned, to try and fit that into, like, an hour and a half, like, what are you doing? Didn't work. Like, really? Yeah. Like, they're doing, um, right now, Amazon Prime, I'm watching this with my parents, too, it's uh, Mr. Mercedes, which is another book series by Stephen King. It's a trilogy, so three movies, yep. or th uh, three books. And they're doing that by season, so they're doing three seasons for it. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like sense. why couldn't you why couldn't you do that for the Dark Tower series? Yep. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. If anything, like I would have fixed is just like instead of trying to put that much content onto an hour and a half, is just take it and make a TV series out of it. I, I it would have been a way better watch. I think a lot more people are like into like the long episode streaming as well, like. Yeah. You know, because uh, Witcher was a book series, and they adapted that into The Witcher was a book series. Yeah, what? originally yeah. a Polish book series. Oh, yep, yep, uh, and a video game. Uh, yep. Well, yeah, I know that. But uh, yeah. was, speaking of which, there's some animosity between the video game makers and the the bookmaker because, like, they bought the uh -huh. license for it, and it wasn't popular at the time, and the video game basically made it popular. So popular. The the book guy was like, yeah, "Pay me more money because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah." That's not how that works, dude. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> little side note there. So, yeah, I, I guess yeah. That's, uh, that's the end of our, our first topic. Second topic is movies that never got made that we would like to see. Actually, I want to. Yeah, if you I got something, go ahead. Take us, into the, take us into the weeds okay. a little bit. A little entertainment news. Yeah. Which 
I just learned about this yesterday. Indiana Jones Five. Yeah, that's coming a, at you. That, that, that's happening. Thing, yeah. Serious? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, please tell me Harrison Ford still it. Yep. How can Harrison Ford still do Indy? He's 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 on the list. So yeah. is uh, Mads Mikkelsen as the uh, villain. Uh, Which is great, by the way. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. Oh, player. I'm down for that. But it's, and this is just internet rumors, but it's probably going to end up in space. <laughs> they're going to. No. It looks like they're going to follow the whole crystal skull thing oh. up in beyond the stratosphere. And we're, we're into, hey, does that uh, mean Shia LaBeouf is like coming in again? Because oh, they kind of like. He's not in it. At, at the yeah. end of Crystal Skulls. Yeah, well, they kind of set him up to be back, the next eh? indie, though. No, he's not back. No. Which is supposed to, yeah, they did. So I, I'm guessing like it's going to be another passing of the torch, but it's it en- ends up like k- kind is, of lefty. I <laughs> well, I have you guys ever heard like Harrison Ford talk about Indiana Jones like in like interviews and stuff? Like the dude is like, when I die, nobody's allowed to play Indiana Jones. Like yeah. like no like he he has it in his head that like even though someone, never someone else Indiana has Jones. because there was that young Indiana Jones series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the 90s. Oh, that was terrible. Yep. But, uh, yeah, Indiana Jones 5 yep. is uh, in production. Yeah. yeah. Apparently. So, uh, belongs in a museum. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if anyone's excited about that, but, uh, well, like, it's happening. I, I don't know. Like, because I know a lot of people were like, when Crystal Skull was out, people were excited because it was like, oh my God, it's an Indiana Jones movie because there was like so much time between. And then people saw it. Like, and yeah, and then they were, like, super disappointed. Yeah. And so, I don't know. Yep. Oh, Indiana Jones I don't know, man. in space. In space. Yeah, like, especially if you're going to throw that in there, too. Okay, like, not, not official, <laughs> but starting to look If it way. is, though, like, it just sounds like you're, you're reaching. You're just like, yeah. you know what? Indiana Jones. We yeah, should like, do something with that. You know? As far as I could tell, uh, Spielberg is not on board. Lucas is not on Like, they're not involved. Yeah. It's more of like a Kathleen Kennedy kind of project. Yeah. Which people are kind of like... Yeah. Eh. That, that's why I'm saying, like, passing of the torch to someone who more fits their worldview. Yeah, people don't. Yeah, people aren't really happy about that. Cause, well, I mean, yeah, but Kathleen Kennedy is pretty much single-handedly blamed for... The, the destruction Star of Star Wars, yeah. Which we'll get to. Yeah. Oh dear! Oh God! Oh no! Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, hell! Yeah. Since we're on the topic, might as well. Yeah, go. I should have had this page ready. Yes. <laughs> Rangers of the New Republic. Yep. Gone. It's gone, huh? Oh. Over. Yep. The that, Car- that was supposed to have Gina, right? Or the, Gina? The Cara Dune spinoff yeah. is. Let me get this quote right. Uh, not currently in active development. Yeah. Not a good sign. Apparently, they've made oh, Filoni, man. though, uh, Dave Filoni, like the head of Star Wars now or something like that. Yeah. Some people are happy about that. Some yeah. Not so much. Because um, he's been, like, <clears throat> the main force behind, like, the Clone Wars series mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And Mandalorian. And I think. the Mandalorian. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the New Republic looks like it's not going to happen. Well, I mean, they announced, like, seven or eight Star Wars projects, like, yeah. last year. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't there one currently... Part of me going on right now? Uh, Bad Batch. It's another animated it. film that follows kind of the Clone Wars stuff. It's pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, I haven't checked it out yet, but I've heard good things. Yeah. I like yes, it that's for it. the most part. It's kind of disappointing. Yeah. Um, yeah, well. I mean, I guess Gina Carano's kind of busy over at Daily Wire. I, I guess so. so. I mean. She's get, still getting like work. She, she's not a. Yeah, like she landed on her feet. Oh, yeah. Yep. She's not going to drop everything and. Well, to this spinoff that she kind of got thrown under the bus for. Well, here we're going to segue from that not getting made. Segway! Segway! This segue is dedicated to Patrick. Yes. He enjoys the segue. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Um, All right. I might as well start off. I would have really liked to see the Nick Cage Superman. Yep. I I wish that got made. Directed by Tim Burton. Directed by Tim Burton. Like, just... Think about that. Like, yeah. <laughs> that would have been insane. The whole history behind it's like, did, did they, yeah. They were making a documentary about that. Yeah, did, I, did I'm that not sure if it came out or whatever. Huh. Uh, I'm not sure if that's part of the, like the, uh, no, the, I might be thinking of Superman, but there was like, 
this thing with like Kevin Smith. I'm not sure if it was like Superman or Batman. And they basically wanted him to like, he wrote a script or a treatment and like the director kept insisting on like there'd be like a giant mechanical spider. And then. Yeah. Then it ended up in Wild Wild West. It ended up in Wild Wild West. Yeah, that was Kevin Smith. Yeah. So. Yep. uh, I got another segue. Oh, okay. No, no, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, no, that's about it. I really would have liked to see the the 90s uh, Superman with Nick Cage. All right. Well, this, uh, this ties into the whole Kevin Smith thing. Yep. And movies we want to see made. Beetlejuice 2. Oh, yeah. Yes. Going Hawaiian. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> Tropical. Would you still have... Um, Michael Keaton? Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. I think he could still do it. I oh, think. God. Yeah. yeah. Who? Okay. He, he's coming who, back. Like, he's, he is. Yeah. yeah. But, like, side note, though. Like, if Keaton couldn't do it, who do you think could play Beetlejuice? No one. Like, out of, like... Right? Like, yeah. I can't picture anybody else doing it. Who can capture that energy? No, it's it's yeah, Ke- it's Keaton or nothing. It's Keaton, Ke- or, Keaton no- or bust. Keaton or bust. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, do you have one? Yeah, this one's kind of weird. Um, I'm a huge Will Smith fan, but I'm kind of curious to see how this one would have been. And it's uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Ridley Scott doing "I Am Legend." Yeah, that would have been something. Mm. I feel I'm, like I'm it would have sure been a such good, a, a wild a good ride. Something or. <laughs> Considering that I, I axed Schwarzenegger from my like <laughs> Batman and Robin treatment, so. Well, yeah, no, I'm just like, I don't know, because like from what I read, it sounded like a really different movie. Yeah. Like obviously, there's still like the like he's trying to find the cure and stuff, but like there wouldn't have been as much dialogue. It would have been more so focused on the fact of how absolutely and just utterly alone this person was. Yeah. And like how like he like he was just silent for most of it because like who like who do you talk to right like it, it would have been a completely different take than the Will Smith I Am Legend I think and it the curiosity is just it's uh it's high. <laughs> have you ever seen the uh, Omega Man with uh, Heston? I think it was because that was basically based on the same book. Yeah, no, that was amazing. Oh, okay. Movie. Yeah, uh, it's like nineteen seventies. Uh, yeah, back when he was like doing like yeah. Just, just, Banging out classics, Planet yeah. of the Apes, Heston, Soylent yeah. Green, Omega Man. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I recommend checking that one out because that's a different take on it. Definitely watch that movie. That's a, it's, it's a really good movie. Yeah. Uh, Sounds good to me. All right, back to me. Um, well, apparently Netflix is doing a live action series of this now, but uh, there were talks for a while of uh, Keanu Reeves doing Cowboy Bebop, playing what? Spike. Yep. For real? Yeah, this was back in five or six years ago. Like, he's not attached to it now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they, they were working on a Cowboy Bebop movie with Keanu. Yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. Would have loved to see uh, it. That's... 100%. That would be money. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, Ooh. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm sad it didn't happen. But I'm still looking forward to the Netflix series because I want to so, see what they do with it. So is that never going to happen? Yeah, I'm curious. No, yeah. I mean, Keanu is getting up there now. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, I mean, he's busy, yeah. too. Yeah. He's probably... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because uh, I I think Spike in that series is like twenties or thirties. Yeah, it's not like yeah. an old. He's like, not John Wick age. Yeah, he's not John Wick age. But uh, yeah, that one, that sucks though. I, I wish that would have happened. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Jorodowski's Dune was another one. Yep. Yes. Terry Gilliam's My uh, God. Uh, uh, Don Quixote. Yeah, well, that would have been great. We've already talked about this stuff, so I don't yeah. know, I'm not going to rehash all of it. Um. Do you have another? Is that one? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, Rachel? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. My no. notes are really disorganized. That's okay. Um. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I feel like, I feel, yeah, I don't know if I... Out of my research here, I don't know if I really... Have yeah. Any, I'm, well, I'm... Okay. I, I, it's not really a remake, but I'm kind of curious to see, like, because the original director for the new It series, like, for keep it on that Stephen King vibe, um, <laughs> like, the ones that were just recently done, the original director for it was, what was his name, sorry, um, he wanted it to be way darker, uh, Kerry F- Fukunaga, I think is how you say it, I'm so sorry if I said that wrong, but, like, she's probably not watching, is some of them, yeah. Or he's not. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but still, um, his was like a way darker version. Like, 
extremely dark. Like he 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 wanted to stick to the like the Stephen King violence of it. Like there's certain things that they cut out in the new one that I thought was probably a good call <laughs> because there were certain things that was like a little too intense for yeah even just an R rating, right? Yeah, isn't there like but a... he, yeah, there there's a scene in the book that a lot of people talk about that involving yeah, were, uh, yeah in, involving uh, the kids so um non-consensual yeah. activities yeah mm mm-hmm. Mhm Yeah that was like boys. one <laughs> of the <laughs> scenes that he, that was one of the scenes he wanted in the script Yeah There was another one too where um when Georgie gets snatched he wanted to show like the entirety of that Oh what, what, if you know what, what I mean No I don't Um okay so like in the in the, uh, the <laughs> I'm not trying to throw you into a minefield here. I just, I, I just I, honestly I'm trying to don't do it know. So what... like, it's not. Basically, they wanted to see Pennywise like devour Georgie instead of just like the him like ripping his arm off and then pulling him to the sewers. Yeah. He wanted to show all of it, kind of thing. And the studio was kind of like, you know what? Mm, Appreciate not. the art, but no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's part of the reason he actually walked away was because they wouldn't let him go as dark as he wanted to go with it. Well, it was made for TV. Yeah. So, yeah, you, no. you can't be killing kids on TV. Well, I guess CSI. No, 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 no. Lot. I'm talking about, like, the... The new the recent, Oh, the new one. Okay. The I'm, new oh, sorry, age. my bad. I was, yeah. I was thinking of the original. No, no, no. Like, the new one. Like, the, the whole reason that he walked away... Because it's like he was supposed to direct both of them. Because they, like, he signed on. He wrote the script, like, and everything. Like, he, he was the guy who was doing all the work. And then the studio read it, and they're like, yo, there's some stuff in here that, like, is yeah. just not okay to go for. And, like, even Stephen King, like, the one scene with all of the kids, he even said, he's like, times are way different than what they were back then. He's like, don't include this in here. And he... Oh, oh do we... I think we... Oh, boy. Yep. Good thing sure. I already have a graphic made for this. Yeah. Do, 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 do. And we're back okay. after that little technical difficulty. I guess maybe things we got too dark. Too a little sinister. bit. I think uh, Discord was not a- appreciative of what I was talking maybe, about. Maybe, maybe not. But yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, I'm curious. I don't know if I'd, I would enjoy it as much as I do enjoy like the current it, but the curiosity is there. I'm, I'm curious of like how much he would have pulled from the book. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, I've mentioned this in passing before, but. Uh, They've been working on like a Robotech movie for quite a long time. <laughs> in space? In, in space, space battles in space. Uh, Toby Maguire was actually like attached to uh, a version of it like maybe like 10, 15 years ago when it was really? still relevant. Huh. So, uh, yeah, I, I would have liked to, to have seen that version. But uh, apparently they are working on, they're still working on it. So I don't know if it's actually going to happen. But yeah, Toby, I don't think is attached uh, anymore. So. Speaking of movies that were worked on for a long time. Yeah. Army of the Dead. Yeah, it's out. I watched it. There you go. Yeah. How was it? Not great. <laughs> I think that's, really? the, that's the consensus with like most reviewers. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've Everyone's already seen this movie. You got a Motley Crue, a variety of like wacky, yeah. unique it's characters. A, it's a heist movie. Yeah, it's, it's Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. With zombies. Actually, no, it's not even zombies. They're like, they're closer to orcs. Okay. There's like a king and a queen and the whole hierarchy. Yeah, like from what I heard, it's like the way that they did the zombies was more of like, um, they were smarter. Yeah. Like they were like, like actually intellectual zombies. And I'm just like, well, I wouldn't doesn't say that go against like yeah. zombies? They definitely form their own society and yeah. have like a, like I said, like I said, a, a hierarchy. Which is a nice concept. Like it, an interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't pan out. Yeah. It, it wasn't great. But uh, mm. actually, in the opening scene, I, I'm pretty sure this was a nod to uh, one of the first zombies in George Romero's Day of the Dead. Yeah. But uh, like the original zombie grabs this one soldier and just kind of rips off his jaw. Yeah. That's probably the most ineffective zombie you could possibly make. Yeah. If you don't have a jaw, you can't bite anybody. You're just all overbite. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> You're useless. <laughs> you go, ha. Yeah, like you just gotta just ha- <laughs> they just gotta chomp. Like we can't even chomp. Yeah. Yeah, like just like trying to think of. <laughs> sorry, seeing a zombie come at you with no bottom jaw, like I wouldn't be stressing. <laughs> yeah. 
And like, it's kind of thinking off the cuff here, but do zombies ever get full? Yeah, that's, Ooh. they must. Yeah, I I mean, yeah. Some books that like deal with zombies, they'll talk about that, and they'll be like, you know, though their guts will burst open because they're just, you know, they continue eating and stuff like that, or. Cause, yeah, they could. Yeah, they don't have a like an active digestive system. So what happens, right? Because they have to get full at some point. Because sometimes they'll just bite someone and just move on. Yep. Other times they're just sticking around and just yep. they, they, cl- pull, they clean the bone. Yeah, they pull people apart. Yeah. So uh, there's food for thought. Yeah. Uh, but, oh yeah, oh, I wish you guys have seen this movie because I saw. I don't know if it was an Easter egg. Or an editing mistake or something. But there's there's a scene where, uh, spoiler, I guess, they are, they're escaping. Okay, they open a safe, they're trying to escape. And there's this one random shot where uh, a zombie comes around the corner and gets shot. And its eyes are just like really briefly glow electric blue. Okay. Which kind of caught me off guard. I was like, yeah. okay, that was weird. Maybe they're kind of foreshadowing something. And then later on, they're, uh, they're escaping the casino. And one of the characters, he's like a, he's a YouTuber. He's just a really good shot. Yeah. He's good at killing zombies. He shoots a zombie. And when its face blows open, it looks like the Terminator underneath. It's like a cyborg. Yeah, that's weird. And I thought they were leading to something, but yeah. it never went anywhere. So I don't know if it's like a, a nod to something or an Easter egg or... Yeah. It was really strange. Who that knows? is so, weird. If you've seen the movie, check out, rewatch those scenes if you didn't see maybe, that. Maybe we're going to find out Snyder's going to direct the next Terminator. Maybe. Yeah, like maybe he is hinting to something, but he's like. But uh, that's been in production hell since uh, 2004. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? No, I was just saying that uh, Batista's in it. He seems to be uh, popping up a lot. Yeah, he's he's one of the wrestlers that actually kind of made the crossover successfully yeah yeah but uh <laughs> well, one interesting fact about a uh, army of the dead there's a zombie tiger okay which it's the tiger it's a uh, siegfried and roy's tiger <laughs> okay that's now a zombie oh, i love yeah uh for some shots they use an actual tiger just in makeup yeah but it was mostly cg but uh the tiger they used as a reference f- to animate the CG tiger was one of Carol Baskin's. <laughs> no, really? Yeah. It all comes back. To- <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. They used Actually, it- side note, like segue here for uh, speaking Carol Baskin and tigers and stuff. I guess Tiger King's uh, sanctuary, like they actually just rescued all of the animals from there. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. It was just in the news. They like, they went in and did like a full raid. Yeah. I don't know where they're going. I hope it's not going to Carol Baskin, but <laughs> oh, like they're taking, like they took everything away from him. He, he'll never finally actually recover from it. I'll never find it. I wonder, okay, I'm going to cut that into here. Yeah. And just see if we get, in, if YouTube gets us in trouble. I think a small clip. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. I think it's good. See small Three clips and stuff. Clip. Yeah. Yeah. Should be okay. Oh my God. I am never going to financially recover from this. But yeah, Man. I thought that was funny. Yeah, that, that's yeah. But Army of the Dead, it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's like a not, six, five. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a five. Yeah, okay. It's yeah, it's really predictable. Yeah, zombies are apparently just terrible for wasting food. Yeah, for sure. And uh, again, I, I don't even feel comfortable calling them zombies. They're more like orcs. Yeah. Okay. So, right. yeah. yeah. Um, do I recommend it? Um, I don't know. Is it like a background movie? Throw it on and then yeah, if wash you your some, dishes. Yeah, if you got some things? laundry to do. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. if you don't see it, you're not missing much. Yeah. Just saying. In terms of stuff I've watched recently, uh, there's a sci-fi series on Netflix, uh, Dark Matter. I Dark think it Matter. ran from like 2014 to 2017. It's it's okay. It's like a decent. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. Um, if, I liked it. If you're looking for something sci-fi, kind of, uh, again. Well, li- it, literally sci-fi. It, it's on that station. Yeah. yeah Sifi. Channel. Sifi or whatever. Um, 
Yeah, <laughs> but if you're looking for like something non-mainstream, it's yeah. it's it's okay sci-fi. Yeah, it's not super yeah. high budget. Okay. Yeah, I I, I, liked I, it. I think it might have been filmed in in BC. Like some of the uh, extras and stuff, um, and some of the accents that I've noticed <laughs> by the actors. Uh, so I, I kind of think it might have been filmed in BC. So I could I could be That's wrong. Though. Yep. So if you're looking for, like I said, look for sci-fi, check that out. Yeah, sci-fi. Yeah. Man, they just, they make good shows and then just cancel them way too early. Yeah. I hate that. It's the worst. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. It sucks. Uh, well, if uh, you want to move on to that's a thing. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. I don't really have one, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got one. Yeah. Oh, my God. For me, uh, I recently discovered like a... Uh, you know, like the Thunderbirds, like the yeah. the puppets, oh. right? Yeah, yeah. So apparently, there's like a small studio that ha- currently like has the rights to them, and they've made like some 50th anniversary type things with the puppets. So apparently, when the pandemic hit, like their studio closed down, so they started filming episodes like in their flat, like their London apartment uh, of not not the Thunderbirds. They've just like grabbed like a bunch of extra puppets that they've had and just made a sci-fi show and and put it on YouTube. Nice. Like they show pictures of like their sets. It's like the middle of their living room and there's like a a metallic console behind them. Looks like they're on a, on a spaceship. So it's like super low budget. Like the scripts aren't like super great or anything, but it's just a project they've done. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in like the Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. Yeah. Or marionettes. Or sci-fi. Um, yeah. it, it's very like seventies. Like the the way that they do it is like this Thunderbird type. Lots know. of evil Knievel looking yeah. kind of outfits. P- pretty much, you know. It's like uh, they're on a, a spaceship that uses atomic fuel rods and stuff like that. So it's like it's not hard sci fi by any <laughs> any means. But it's like yeah, we have some leftover puppets. We're gonna make a series yeah. while we're while we're in lockdown. Here you go. It's like Nebula seventy five. I think the series is called. It's on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Uh, ooh. Uh, another movie we referenced in a previous episode. Yep. That just came out on Shutter. So I guess Amazon Prime too, but you'd probably have to rent it. Psycho Gorman. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really good movie. Been meaning to watch that myself, yeah. Really good. Yeah. If you're into uh, 1980s sci-fi, fantasy, D&D, yep. If you play Warhammer, you're gonna love this movie. <laughs> uh, it's it's really funny. Not all the jokes land. Some of them are kind of corny. Yeah. Uh, not lo- not like a super high budget movie, but it's it's kind of the point because it's playing into yeah, the, it's playing into the schlock. But uh, oh my god, the aliens in this movie are amazing. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm just gonna pause to fill the screen as, with as many images as I can find online right about now. Those are amazing. Right. Look yep. at these things. <laughs> Look at this. But yeah, no, it's like, oh, the costumes and the makeup and the prosthetics are incredible. Yeah, I, I've seen stills from it. Like I said, I've been meaning to watch it. It's Canadian, right? I'm not sure. I, I think it is. I think it is. It is Canadian. Yeah. If it is, then well done, Canada, because yeah. that movie is fantastic. Uh, if you've seen Turbo Kid, yep, you're going to like this. Ooh, if you like okay. Stranger Things, you'll probably like this. It's wacky. It's goofy. Lots of aliens. Uh, tons of gore. Yep. Well, maybe not tons of gore, but a bit. Yeah. There, I mean, for a movie called Psycho Gorman, there has to be yeah, some. There's, there's some for like, sure. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I know it was incredible. Okay. Uh, nice. It was. It was a good uh, palate cleanser after watching Army of the Dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Rachel, you said you had something for the. That's the thing. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> I had to fact check this, and it, apparently, from everything that I've sourced, it's it's legit. Um, did y'all know that Pepsi, like the company, you know, Coke versus Pepsi, they um, for a while they had the sixth largest military in the world. Oh yeah, yeah, I he- I've heard about that. Hmm. After uh, the USSR went under, like they bought some subs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they like what was it? They had a. Uh, yeah, they bought billions of dollars worth of Pepsi, the USSR, by trading the submarines and like military ships and a ton of vodka. Yep. And they just wanted Pepsi, and so they're like, "Okay, we'll give you this if you give us that." They're like, "Okay." And then like PepsiCo like kept like all of the 
military stuff for a while, and then they're like, you know what? Like, we don't actually need this, so they sold it for like scrap recycling or something. The Cola Wars could have turned out very differently. (laughs) Oh my god, right? Like, but could you imagine though? Just like (laughs) you're the CEO of Pepsi, and the USSR is like, hey, instead of us paying you, do you want some subs? (laughs) And, like, vodka and military stuff so we could get some Pepsi? Like, what? <laughs> well, there was a point, I think it was, like, maybe probably 20 years ago at this point, where the Russian government was so broke, they had to pay their teachers in vodka. <laughs> Fun fact, what would you do with bad. that, though? Well, you'd either you'd dr- drink it or barter. It. Yeah. I guess, hey. Things were rough after the fall of the Iron Curtain. Well, this wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's fair. Okay. Oh, uh, so that's the thing? Yeah. World Chase Tag? Yeah. How's it going? First round of semifinals just finished. <laughs> nice. Hollywood Freerunners took it. Yeah. Are, are they your team? No, I'm going Apex. Okay. But uh, Hollywood Freerunners, they're pretty good. Yeah. It's it's an entire team, team of stuntmen, like Hollywood stuntmen. Whoa. That would be like, a, yeah, if you were putting together a tag team. Yeah. But a tag team. That's your go-to. <laughs> yeah. But, uh. Yeah, Apex. Still. Still Apex in still your Still looking good. Still yeah. looking strong, man. Nice. I'm in it. I'm in it, for, I'm in it to win it. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. Um, well, if anyone have anything else they want to talk about? Uh, let's see. Oh, Chris is. He's, he's I, the man today. I even got sticky notes. He's got. St- wow. I'm running out of paper. Yeah. You need a new notebook. Yeah. We need to get sponsored soon. Come on, uh. Yeah, come on, me undies. I kn- I know that you're still sponsoring stuff. You know what? Well, how that helped with the notebook situation, but yeah, yeah. You good? That's it. All right, that's well, a wrap. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Media Minute. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Uh, we're on BitChute as well. Don't forget BitChute. Yep, I should uh, make a graphic for that. Check yeah. BitChute. And uh, yeah, for Media Minute, I'm Michael Forward. I got nothing funny to say this time. Okay. I'm Rachel Edge. (laughs) See you next time.